The second wave has arrived, just as doctors predicted months ago, but neither the federal government nor the provincial governments have the rapid test promised and available to deal with it, or even have done to do enough contact tracing. Now, this past week, Alberta and the federal government started a pilot project to have international travelers landing in Calgary to get a faster test, not a rapid test, but that could cut down the required quarantine time from two weeks to seven days. But the costs of the lack of rapid tests are massive. On Friday, StatsCan released a report saying the border closures have cost the Canadian economy up to $37 billion and over 550,000 jobs in tourism and related industries. And in the midst of all this, the Conservatives, the NDP and the Bloc will support a motion to be voted on tomorrow that demands a wide-ranging investigation into the government's COVID response. So why does the government say this isn't the time? This is all a distraction. Let's find out. Joining us now is the Health Minister, Patty Haidu. Uh, Minister, great to have you on the program, and I hope you and the family are well. Let's start with the opposition. They want accountability on your government's response to the crisis. Everything from what you knew when about the virus, closing the borders, getting a rapid tests. The government has spent hundreds of billions of dollars. What is wrong with accountability at a committee? Nothing at all, Evan. In fact, we've been in front of the uh, HESA committee, health committee, uh, numerous times, Dr. Tam, myself, a variety of officials. We've produced documents. We continue to do that. And we'll be there to do that uh, in an ongoing fashion. I think the concern that the government had with the original state of the motion was just the design of the motion itself, which compelled the government to hand over all documents over a number of different areas and portfolios within uh, 15 days which as you can imagine is volumes and volumes of material. I know now the documents you get a month to produce them not two weeks. Aaron O'Toole says we want to find out a little more detail for example he says that you as a minister over relied on the WHO and what China was saying at the outset of the crisis and didn't respond in time. By the way the US intelligence has concluded that the Chinese misled the world in the early stages the Australians have said in retrospect now because you had defended the WHO did China mislead the world on the, in the early stages of this pandemic and therefore mislead Canada? Look, I think there's no question that there have been many opportunities for all countries to be more transparent about what's happening, and those things will unfold in a review. China should have a review of how they conducted themselves during the pandemic. The World Health Organization has committed to a review of how they have responded to the coronavirus. Canada has been a voice asking for that. I have spoken with Dr. Tedros myself and, and uh, indicated that Canada is very very interested in participating in that eventual review of the World Health, or World Health Organization. But I'll also say that Canada will have to do a review of our own response. And in fact, I think all countries will. This started in China. And, you know, there's a producer on our program asked you whether you can trust the WHO if China is providing false information. And you had dismissed that as conspiratorial in nature. Uh, do you still believe, considering what our allies' intelligence has shown, uh, that it, those are conspiracies or again because it's important the WHO can only do what the information act on the information they're getting and if China wasn't honest that has a massive not only uh, economic uh, impact but lives are lost because of that. If China wasn't honest, then they uh, need to be held to account. But I can tell you this, uh, the World Health Organization, although flawed, I will repeat, is an important organization in combating global pandemics. And we need to have global cooperation. Uh, so I will say this again, Canada has asked the World Health Organization to conduct a review of how they've responded to COVID-19 and the pandemic. And we will be doing our own review as a country as well. And those things are going to be important for leaders of the future to deal with uh, novel pathogens as they arise. Canada had this world-class monitoring system that might have, uh, using open source information, detected the viral outbreak before it was made official. You and I have spoken about this, the Global Public Health Intelligence Network. You were on this program saying you, when you became the Minister of Health, you hadn't even heard of it, but you were going to investigate why it was dismantled. It could have recalibrated Canada's response. Since then, have you found out why someone in your government dismantled dismantled it, who was responsible, and if your government will reinvest in this program quickly to get it restarted. 
So uh, first part of that, yes, the, the Global Public Health Information Network was reoriented. Uh, it was a, a, a bureaucratic decision. And uh, when I found out that that decision had been taken, that's when I ordered an external review. That will be launched very shortly. And yes, absolutely, Canada will be investing in every tool possible to protect us from uh, the threat of, of pathogens, uh, novel pathogens across the world. It's really, really important that we uphold the voice of scientists and I think when I heard reports that scientists felt their voices were not being taken seriously within the Public Health Agency of Canada that was a very very distressing thing oh. for me and certainly we've rectified that but in the interim but who's accountable um, I just I, I mean and you say you've rectified it there's still we still don't have it back up and running is there anybody accountable like who was accountable for dismantling something that could have been absolutely critical well, listen, uh, as you know, the Public Health Agency of Canada has a new president. He is well aware of the need to uh, reinstate the Global Public Health Information Network. They are now back in operation, and the review will be uh, uncovering all those kinds of answers about how that decision came to be and why it is that, uh, why it, is that it happened. The federal government has given the provinces billions of dollars to increase funding for their health services, start the economy. But you still see Canadians standing in long lines waiting for tests or waiting for appointments. You still see people waiting days and days, in some cases weeks, to get their results back as cases are surging. And this is having a, a critical impact. Why hasn't the federal government used its thumb and stuck it on the scale and called out provinces more to do more on rapid testing or got that, those rapid tests more quickly? It, it seems that we're way behind on that. Well, I think, you know, com countries all around the world are, uh, you know, actively seeking new tools, including rapid testing as a solution to help understand where COVID-19 is in their communities and then track and trace uh, the disease. But listen, testing is only one component. It has to be followed up with contact tracing and then isolation of close contacts. Otherwise, it's just a diagnostic well, we, tool. I get that, but so the ball was dropped. We didn't have enough reagents for, for labs or Ontario shipping them to California. You talk about contact tracing. Toronto's not even doing that anymore because they don't have the resources to do that. Somebody dropped the ball. You know, Canadians are just wondering who's accountable. You say you, you, you put the money to the provinces. If the provinces are accountable, why didn't you call them out more? Well, I think we have, to be fair, Evan, talked about challenges in ta Ontario's testing strategy, for example, which is now reoriented to follow national guidance. I think we have actually pushed provinces and territories to follow the evidence and the research and the science. And listen, I'll remind you that uh, provincial uh, jurisdiction is in control of direct health care delivery. So at the end of the day, uh, the federal government is there to support with resources, with tools, with technology, with guidance, and even with additional supports of people. I just want to talk about this, this testing going on in Calgary, Minister. If tests are scarce, as we've talked about that, I know there's going to be more rapid tests arriving, but they're clearly pretty scarce. Why allocate some of these tests to airports to test people who have willingly left the country and, and, and are coming back, as opposed to allocating them where they may more be needed? Parents who have been stuck at home for months in cities. What is the ethical decision to allocate tests to an airport as opposed to other places? The test that uh, the, the study is actually going to prove, uh, hopefully, give us more evidence and, and more decision-making power around what is the length uh, appropriate for quarantine? Can we reduce the quarantine using a combination of testing and, and, uh, and, and isolation or quarantine? Uh, how do we manage the borders going forward? You saw the debate on Thursday night last week with Donald Trump, and he said, we're rounding the corner. And a vaccine is weeks away, he said. Can you give Canadians a timeline? How close are we to getting any vaccine? Are we, quote, rounding the corner? How, do, how does his view of it compare to your view? There's a lot of optimism because, of course, uh, in Canada, we have three of uh, the six vaccines that we've procured uh, that have submitted to Health Canada for what's called a rolling approval, meaning that they'll submit evidence as it's gathered so that we can approve as quickly as possible the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. And that's exciting. But I, I'm hesitant to put a date on it because, in fact, this is really in the domain of science and research. And what I want Canadians to know is that Health Canada will ensure that whatever vaccine is approved proved is safe for use in Canada and is working as quickly as possible to assess the evidence as it comes in. I, I, I got to leave it there. I really appreciate your time, Minister. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Evan. All right, that's the Minister day. of Health, uh, Patty Haidu.